Okay, we are at the Temple of Dendara, an hour and a half drive from the city of Luxor. And this is a dynastic Egyptian site. We'll see a little bit of megalithic, but not much. And so dedicated to the goddess Hathor or Hathor. So we have Patricia Aoyan with us, and she's going to do most of the talking here. I'm going to save my energy for tomorrow because we're going to be flying to <clears throat> Cairo, going to Giza, and we're going to enter the Osiris Shaft on the Giza Plateau. And so that will be something very much worth recording and sharing with you. The site is at uh, Dendara is where we will have the so-called light bulbs, which are in a uh, room underneath this main structure. Also on top of it, in another room is the famous Dendara Zodiac. So there is a lot to see at this site. It's just, it's not a megalithic place. The foundation probably was originally megalithic. But just join with me as I walk through this ancient place. So as we proceed towards the Temple of Hathor, this is another structure. which was the birthing house. That's where women would go to both um, do prayers and incantations for pregnancy, and then they would also come here to give birth. So a very feminine site. All of the columns in here are made of sandstone. Block on top of block, on top of block, on top of block, on top of block. But in here, the lower section is actually granite. So it could be that this was originally a megalithic site and was inherited and adopted by the dynastic people. That's what you find at a lot of locations in ancient Egypt 
megalithic foundations or megalithic remnants or megalithic components possibly brought in from another location. So walking through the temple of Hathor, look very carefully, center of the frame, you'll see one of the famous quote unquote Dendara light bulbs. There in the center of the frame. And then over here, we have two more. So now just walking through the Temple of Hathor. And this room leads to a staircase and down that staircase off to the left are where the more famous Dendera light bulbs are located. So it's temporarily blocked off, but we're going to come back in and we will go down and film that too. So again, we're just going to walk around inside the Temple of Hathor. Dynastic, walls covered, almost every square inch with hieroglyphics, a lot of them scratched out. Destruction done by later post-dynastic cultures. Yep, now we are approaching the stair, one of the two staircases that goes up. And people have wrongly stated that these are made of granite. They're in fact sandstone. And also they say that it was a blast of laser beam or some kind of heat that came in here that melted them. But we have geologist Susan Moore here with us. So she will give us a geological perspective on what we're looking at. Uh, these are very interesting stairs. They're sandstone stairs, as is majority of this temple. They're not granite, and when you look down at them, you can see very clearly that it is sandstone. You can see the individual grains if you get down on your hands and knees and have a good look. These are weathered. Uh, you don't see any sign of any kind of heat on the walls, but with the weathering, sandstone, and we had talked earlier about uh, porosity permeability and cementation, these were not cemented particularly well with a natural cement that would flow through the, the pore spaces. So therefore, they were more subject to degrading and weathering. But the reason why some of the uh, steps show a bit of raised nature to them was that as Marriott was excavating in here, he poured a couple of bags of, of concrete on here just to help him get up and down. So this is kind of weathered and then it's been repaired and it's weathering again. And Marriott was who? Was an early explorer excavating on this site. Right, in the 19th century? 1819, he was... From France. Yes. I'm not sure of the exact dates, but he was here a couple of times, I believe, and that is in some of his journals that he did for a couple of bags of concrete on here. Now, the upstairs was used for numerous years holding grain. They used to store grain up there. So walking up these stairs all the time with sacks of grain, that's going to wear these stairs down a lot. 
and if you look at all the rest of the stairs going up, they show a certain amount of weathering. When we've gone to Edfu and every place else, uh, you see that same kind of weathering. I think here it's a little bit odd because it went, they're narrow little stairs. You can see, I mean, they're only this thick. Mm -hmm. So they weather very easily. So it's weathered almost into a ramp, and then you put the, the concrete on top, and you've created what looks like melted stairs when they're really not. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to walk up the staircase at Dendara. These are made of sandstone. They are not made of granite. And it is not the result of a laser beam coming through. It's the result of the fact that these are 2,000 years old. And so thousands, if not millions of people have walked up this staircase causing the natural erosion. And then if there's any rain, then that would cause the bottoms of people's sandals to be wet and even possibly have some grit on them. And so that would result in the weathering patterns that we see. It was not some kind of very advanced alien or human technology like a laser or something. That is a story people make up because we just had Susan Moore, a geologist, tell us that they are weathered from 2,000 years of human activity. So this is the other so-called melted staircase at Dendara in Egypt. Some people claim that these stairs were melted by some kind of device like a laser or intense heat source of some other kind and that the stone is granite. The stone is not granite. This whole building is constructed of sandstone, which is relatively soft. And so, these stairs, which are 2,000 years old, are the result of weathering patterns happening, because sacks of grain were taken up to storage rooms upstairs in this building, so over the course of hundreds of years, thousands of people going up and down or up with sacks of grain and maybe with a little bit of grit under their sandals and a bit of water from rain would cause the melted pattern, so-called melted pattern, simply weathering, according to our geologist Susan Moore. So no great mystery. And also the archaeologist Mariette in the 19th century did some patching and repair work with concrete, which you can still see to this day. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay. Okay, so everything we were looking at in the first Epistyle Hall, which I obviously didn't have time to, to speak about all of it, is actually kind of expressed in a similar, well, in a, in a totally, it's almost like a three-dimensional way of expressing what we experienced on a 2D image in the first Epistyle Hall. So it, and it actually spirals in and it spirals out again this story of um, a year and for a great year. So the story begins, and here we have our Tarette, remember her? And she was downstairs right around Capricorn, between Capricorn and Sagittarius, and she marked the moment that everything switched and moved into that first breath of form again. 
right, into the age of cancer. So she was in the other side of the hallway in Capricorn Sagittarius, and she marks the first breath into the age of cancer. Here is our, it's actually the actual symbol of the crab that is cancer. So this shows you that that is the portal of the Silver Gate, right, between Capricorn and Cancer. And here we have this wonderful image of Anubis. He's the path opener, right, and the embalmer, the sacred embalmer, right? He embalms us in the linens or the uh, veil of forgetfulness. He is riding the plow, the mare, right? Mare being the symbol for love. It's that he is riding... Basically, the symbol that represents the opening for the navigation, we are going to be wrapped in the magnetic field, embalmed in the veil of forgetfulness. And it all happens here. And of course, here you have the foreleg of the Big Dipper. So you have this dynamic of the swastika spin in the heavens, right? 